Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on a topic. Are ye come to inquire of me? See, family, we see that as many teachers out there that teach all different types of doctrine. And once some of them get exposed to a little bit of truth, they try to act like they always knew this information and they try to blend it with the doctrines that they already was attached to. And we know the most high God of Israel has one doctrine and his doctrine doesn't mix with any of these other flood of doctrines out there and belief systems. So he's simply asking a question. Are ye come to inquire of me? So family, we're going to allow the precepts of the most high God of Israel to minister to us. And it's my prayer that someone will be richly edified and we can gain some knowledge and strength and understanding of ourselves while we are on this journey. So we're going to start at the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 verses one through 11. And we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching. Once again, this is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible university. It says, and it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the 10th day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel, not elders of other nations, but elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord, of the spirit of God and set before him. Then came the word of the Lord unto me saying, son of man, meaning what servant of man speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, thus said the creator God, meaning the creator Yahweh, are ye come? To inquire of me as I live, said the creator of Yahweh, I will not be inquired of by you. Will thou judge them? In other words, will thou teach them, son of man, O servant of man? Will thou teach them, cause them to know the abomination of their fathers? See, as a servant of the Most High, it's our job to cause his people to know all of their wrongdoings, to know all of their faults, to know all their, the abominations that we have done collectively. He says, in saying to them, thus said the creator Yahweh, in the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up my hand, meaning lifted up my power, my spirit, my strength unto the seed of the house of Jacob. And made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when they was in the midst of confusion, when they was in the midst of ungodliness, unholiness, just corruptible. When they was in the midst of all of that. He said, when I lifted up my hand, my power unto them, saying, I am the Lord, the spirit of God, your God, meaning what your guide in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt, meaning to bring them up out of confusion, to bring them out of that house of bondage into the land that I had aspired for them. Flowing with milk and honey. So in other words, I came to raise their consciousness. 
I came to transform them from one level of consciousness to another a higher level of consciousness. I came so they won't be dumbed down anymore by the doctrines of devils, the idols and, and the other gods of the other nations. I came to give them this land, this level of knowledge that's flowing with milk and honey, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and truth, which is the glory of all lands. Mm. Then I said unto them, cast ye away every man, the abomination of his eyes, meaning the abomination of his understanding. In other words, you got to get rid of that understanding you working with because I'm going to give you a new understanding and it's going to be filled with the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and you will have a clear understanding. This is what he's telling us. He says, cast away every man the abomination of his eyes and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt, the idols of bondage. I am the spirit of God, your guide. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abomination of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols, those devils, of Egypt, of confusion, of bondage, of corruptness. See, they didn't forsake it. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. So they in this mindset to where they full of darkness. I'm trying to bring them to the land that's flown with milk and honey. This mindset where if, where is wisdom, knowledge, understanding is strength is power in the word of God. I'm trying to bring them up to this higher level of consciousness, but because they rebelled against me, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake, for my way's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were in whose sight I made myself known unto them. And bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt. And brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statues. And showed them my judgments. Meaning my doctrine and teachings. Which if a man do. He shall even live in them. This is what we must do. He's showing us right here in verse 10 and verse 11 what he did. He said, wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statues and showed them my judgments, which if the man do, he should even live in them. Now let's go see exactly where he did this at because he's he's telling us about it first corinthians chapter 10 verse 1 through 10 he says moreover brethren i would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and we're all baptized, meaning we're all condemned unto Moses, which had the first five books, the law book, in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat, meaning did all learn that same spiritual meat, spiritual doctrine, 
and did all drink that same spiritual drink for they drink of that spiritual rock. They learn of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ, the spirit of God, Jehovah. This is who it was. But with many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. And now these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed. And fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. See, a lot of us doing these things right now. But we should use this as an example let's go back to ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12 down to 24 he said moreover i also gave them my sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that i am the spirit of god that sanctified them, that separated them to the Sabbath. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statues, and they despised my judgment, my doctrine and teachings. Even today, as we push out this truth to the four corners of the earth, These teachings are being despised. They're being evil spoken of by a lot of people out there. They want to be rebellious against the word of God. He said, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They speak evil of it because they don't want to live according to the word. He said, in my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted, doing their own pleasures, doing their own business and doing things they want to do and not resting and meditating on the word of God. He said, then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, because they despise my judgments, and walk not in my statues, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols, went after their own gods. Nevertheless, mine eyes spared them from destroying them, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statues of your fathers. Don't follow their footsteps. Don't follow the examples that they have laid before you. Do not walk in their statues. Neither observe their judgments, their doctrine and teaching, nor defile yourselves with their idols, their gods, their, their things that they give respect to and worship. He says, I am the spirit of God, your guide. Walk in 
my statues and keep my judgments, my doctrine and teachings and do them and hollow my Sabbaths and they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the spirit of God, your God, your guide. Notwithstanding the children rebelled against me, they walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgment to do them, which if a man do, he should even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them. In the wilderness. That's what's going on right now because we in the wilderness right now, family. He said, nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake. That it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen. In whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statues and had polluted my Sabbaths in their eyes, their understandings were after their father's idols. Look at how many times we choose our family religion over the word of God. We choose these traditions of men in these worship buildings, these chapels, these churches that the Bible call prison houses that will lock your mind in bondage and captivity and in chains. We choose these things over the word of God. This is what we choose to do. It's so sad family because the word of God is right. The word of God don't make any mistakes. But with all that he tells us and warns us, we choose not to obey his voice. We choose to do our own thing. We choose to say, no, Lord, we're not going to do the way you told us to do it, Lord. We're going to do it this way we're going to do it that way he knows what's best for us but we choose not to follow his instructions then we wonder how it is that we can't hear from him we wonder how it is that things is always going against us and not working in our favor. When all we had to do is obey his voice, follow his command. But no, we say, no, we're going to follow after our father's idols. Grandmama and, and mama and them always went to this church. Our family name is on the pews and we're going to keep going and paying these tithes and offerings to support this ministry because we got history with this church. Our family name is on the pews. All alone. I'm going to pivot for a minute. All alone, the Most High is sitting here telling us. In the book of Acts chapter 7 and verse 48. All while you wanting to keep the legacy going of your family name on the pews at your local church. Also known as a prison house. In Acts 7 and 48. 
the most high say how be it the most high dwell it not in temples made with hands as said the prophet the one that is pushing his word he dwells not in temples made with hands, but you say you want to go in this temple that's made with hands to give worship to your father's idols. Because it's show sure not the most high God of Israel you give him worship to. You're not giving respect unto him. You give him respect unto your father's idols. Just like he said here. So these are some things that we're going to have to get straight, family. We're going to have to get this thing straight. He said, I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statues and have polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes, their understanding, were after their father's idols. This book is so clear. It is so true. It is manifesting itself every day because this is exactly what's going on. To the T, to the letter. Let's keep going. Ezekiel. Chapter 21, verse 2 down to 13. He says, Son of man, servant of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem and drop thy word toward the holy places, the holy people, the ones that's called by my name, the one that I put my law in their hearts and in, in their mind and in their inward parts. He's saying, Prophesy against the land of Israel, the nation of Israel, the house of Israel, the people of Israel. Prophesy against them and say to the, the land of Israel. Thus said the spirit of God. Behold, remember, I am against thee and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath. And will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. That's the plumb line. His word is going to do the cutting. His sword, the word. He says, seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheave against all flesh. From the south to the north. That all flesh may know that I, the Spirit of God, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath. It shall not return anymore. Sigh, therefore, thou son of man, with the breaking of thy loins and with bitterness. Sigh before their eyes. And it shall be when they say unto thee, Wherefore, sires thou, that thou shalt answer for the tidings, because it cometh, and every heart shall melt, and all hands shall be feeble, and every spirit shall faint, and all knees shall be weak as water. Behold, it cometh and shall be brought to pass, said the Creator Yahweh. And again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus said the Spirit of God, Say a sword, a sword is sharpened, and also furbish. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbish. That it may glitter. Should we then make myrrh? It could timid the rod of my son as every tree. And he have given it to be furbished. That it may be 
handled. This sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon thy thigh, because it is a trial. And what if the sword could tim even the rod? It shall be no more, said the creator Yahweh. So he's letting us know that it is a trial. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. He said, Beloved, ye promised ones, ye holy ones, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't think it's strange. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 14. He said, thou therefore, son of man, prophesy and smite thy hands together and let the sword be doubled the third time. This is this fiery trial that he's talking about. The sword of the slain. It is the sword of the great men that are slain, which entered into their privy chambers. Just think of how many people there's. Giving respect to idols in secret. They learning other doctrines in secret. Then they show up here at the King James Bible University channel, Lost Sheep of the House of Israel, acting like they fellowshipping and they going other places in secret, getting their spiritual meat from other tables. He said it is the sword of the great men, these teachers and elders, leaders that are slain, which entered into their privy chambers. And let's, let's look at that. Let's get an example of that in scripture. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1 through 18. He says, and it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders, the teachers, the leaders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the creator Yahweh fell there upon me. Then I beheld in lo a likeness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his loins, even downward fire. And from his loins, even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of Yahweh to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked it toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked it to jealousy? And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I, has, that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now on the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward, at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said, furthermore unto me, 
Southern men see us thou what they do. Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, from my people that is called by my name, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Mm. He said, and he brought me to the door of the court. And when I look, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had dig in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do there, that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients, the elders, the teachers, the ones that are supposed to have the wisdom of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shapham, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do? In the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery and his privy chambers that he spoke about in Ezekiel chapter 21. For they say the spirit of God see it us not. The spirit of God have forsaken the earth. See, this is what they say. And let's go show that again and we'll come back here over in Ezekiel chapter 21 and let's see here verse 14 he said thou therefore son of man prophesy and smite thy hands together and let the sword be double the third time the sword of the slain it is the sword of the great men that are slain which entered into their private chambers so this is exactly what is speaking of over here in Ezekiel chapter 8 and in verse uh, 12. <laughs> they, the son of Mace said, Has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Spirit of God seeth us not. The Lord have forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, they weeping for this false God, this idol God, he said, then said he unto me, has thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple, of the Spirit of God between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Spirit of God and their faces towards the east. And they worshiped the sun towards the east. Then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the 
house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, for that reason, will I deal, will I also deal in fury? Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. I'm not going to hear them because they're doing all of these abominable things. Ezekiel 21 and verse 15. He says, I have set the point of the sword against all their gates, all of their tribes, their 12 nations, that their heart may faint and their ruins be multiplied. Oh! It is made bright. It is wrapped up for the slaughter. That's what it is. Zechariah chapter 11. In verse 15 and 16. He said it's wrapped up for the slaughter. It's made bright. He said, and the spirit of God said unto me, take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. No, yeah, that's right. A foolish shepherd. He says in, for lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land. I want you to listen at this real closely. I'm going I'm to read this slow because I want you to get what he's saying. Start back over at verse 15. He says in the Lord, the spirit of God said unto me, take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd, not a, a shepherd that will work for the most high. But he said the instruments of a foolish shepherd. He said, for lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not Visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that is broken. He's not going to feed them with the truth. Nor feed that, that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh. He's going to learn the ways of the flesh of the fat. And tear their claws in pieces. In other words, he's going to be a foolish shepherd. That's why he said in verse 15, take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Because he's going to raise up this foolish shepherd. That's what he's saying. Somebody say, oh, he won't do that. Okay. Let's go here to Ezekiel chapter 20. Get some more information. Verse 25 down to 31. He says, Wherefore I gave them also statues <laughs> that were not good. See, as he brought together the instruments of this foolish shepherd that will not heal the broken, will not feed it the one that stands still, that's not going to see about the young ones. They're going to be foolish. He raised them up. He said, wherefore I gave them also statues from this same foolish shepherd that were not good. <laughs> and judgments and doctrine and teachings whereby they should not live. Since they want to go after these abominable things, I'm going to raise them up a foolish shepherd. <laughs> he says, and I polluted them in their own gifts. <laughs> he say, in that they caused to pass through the fire all that opened the womb. 
that I might make them desolate. This is the most high speaking. I want you to get this. He said to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. I am the spirit of God. I can do these things. You choose to go another way. I'll raise up a foolish shepherd that will teach you the foolishness and pollute you in your own gifts. They're going to teach you judgments that you should not live by. Mm. They're going to give you statues that are not good for you. But because you chose to rebel against me, I'm going to raise you up a foolish shepherd. What he's saying. He says, Verse 27, therefore, for that reason, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, thus said the creator Yahweh, yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me and that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to them. Then they saw every high hill <laughs> and all the thick trees and they offered their, their sacrifices, their established covenant. And there they presented the provocation of their offering there also they made their sweet savior and poured out their, their drink offerings. Wow. They did all these abominable things. He said, then I said unto them, what is the high place wherein to ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel. Mm, 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 mm. Thus said the creator Yahweh. Are ye polluted after the name, are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? And commit ye whoredom after their abominations? Generation after generation after generation, you still going to represent the family church? <laughs> he said, for when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day, and shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? Are ye come to be acquired of me? As I live, said the creator Yahweh, I will not be inquired of by you. This will not go down. See, a lot of you still stretching your head saying, I just don't feel like the Most High will have these instruments of a foolish shepherd to raise up to teach us statues that's not good and to feed us judgments that we should not live by. I just don't feel like the most high God of Israel would allow these things to happen. I know some of you out there is saying this. So let's just go in scripture and show you where he will allow these things to happen. First Kings chapter 22, and we're going to give you an example. 
verse 19 down to 23. It says, make sure that's second Kings. Let me get in the right spot. First Kings chapter 22 and verse 19 down to 23. And it says, and he said, hear thou therefore the word of the spirit of God. I saw the spirit of God sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the spirit of God said, and the spirit of God said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramah Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Spirit of God and said, I will persuade him. And the Spirit of God said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shall persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the spirit of God have put a Lion spirit in the mouth of all these dad prophets, not in his prophets, but in dad prophets, the ones that you wanted to follow after, the ones that you wanted to hold on to, the ones that you wanted to follow after your father's idols. He put a lion spirit in the mouth of all dad prophets, all of dad elders, all of dad teachers, not his. And the spirit of God have spoken evil concerning thee. So don't sit here and try to tell me what the most high God of Israel won't do. Because he done showed you in multiple places what he will do. Even here in Zechariah where it's so clear. Chapter 11 and. Verse 15, he said, the spirit of God said unto me, take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that is broken, nor feed that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat. And tear claws, tear their claws in pieces. That's what he's going to do. This is what he's going to do. Deuteronomy. Chapter 18. Verses 20 down to 22. He says, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Spirit of God have spoken? When a prophet speak it in the name of the spirit of God, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that this or that is the thing which the spirit of God have not spoken. But the prophet have spoken it presumptuously. Thou shall not be afraid of him. So he's telling us we should not be afraid. Micah. Chapter three. 
And we'll hit verse 5 down to 11. He says, thus said the Spirit of God concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth, with their doctrine, with their teachings, and cry peace, and he that put it not into their mouths. They even prepare war against him. Therefore, night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. And it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets. And the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed. And the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of Yahweh. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Spirit of God, and of judgment, and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression. And to Israel his sin. Hear this I pray you. Ye heads of the house of Jacob. And the princes of the house of Israel. That abhor judgment. And pervert all equity. They build up Zion. With blood. And Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof. Judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Spirit of God and say, Is not the Spirit of God among us? None evil can come upon us. We see the preachers and teachers that's in this category. All the time. Teaching for hire. Divining for money. Judging for reward. They have a pastor's salary. We see this all the time. Zechariah. Chapter 11. In verse 17, he says, Woe to the idol shepherd. <laughs> this old devil shepherd that leave it the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened so you you going your understanding is going to be darkened where you should have wisdom knowledge and and, and understanding locating and residing is going to be darkened all together being our idle shepherd a foolish shepherd ezekiel chapter 34 verse 2 down to 16 he says, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. These elders and teachers of Israel. He's been talking to them their whole entire teaching. He said, prophesy and say unto them. Thus said the creator Yahweh unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed. But ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. 
neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. You didn't do any of these things. But with force and with cruelty have ye rule over them. You wanting to see their W-2 forms. To make sure they paying the right amount of tithes that you say they ought to be paying. You want to make them work and sell chicken dinners and sell cakes and make them labor and work to raise money to help the church, the ministry. And then you're going to sell them on the Sabbath day. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And none did search or seek after them. Therefore, for that reason, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Spirit of God. As I live, said the creator Yahweh, surely because my flock became a prey. And my flock became meat to every beast of the field. Because there was no shepherd Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Spirit of God. Thus said the Creator Yahweh, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. And cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth. That they may not be meat for them. For thus said the creator Yahweh. Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep. And seek them out as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in a day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people. And gather them from the countries. And will bring them to their own land. And feed them upon the mountain of Israel. By the rivers. And in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture. And upon the high mountains of Israel. Shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, said the creator Yahweh. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. So in other words, all of the ones that's going after the flesh. Going after their abominable things. They going after the, the idols of their fathers. The religions and the practices of their fathers he said i'm gonna feed them with judgment so i'm gonna feed them isaiah chapter 58 
verse 8 through 14. He says, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and dying health shall spring forth speedily as I seek out. And let's make sure we're making this connection here. I want to make sure everybody is seeing this. I want to make sure we're seeing this. Right here in verse 16. We'll hit 15 and 16. He said, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down. Said the creator of your I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. I'm going to do all of that. He said, but I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. So he's going to strengthen that which was sick. He's going to bind up that which was broken. And he's going to seek that which was lost. This is what he's going to do. He's going to seek us out. And as he seeks us out here in Isaiah 58 and 8. He says, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the spirit of God shall be thy real world. Then shall thou, thou call and the spirit of God shall answer. Thou shall cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the spirit of God shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shall be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shall be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure, in other words, going to do your own business, going in the malls and shopping and trying to get deals and, and, and washing up your cars and just doing all of these other things. But from doing thy pleasure, on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight. The holy of the spirit of God. Honorable and shall honor him. Not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shall thou delight thyself in the spirit of God. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth of the spirit of God have spoken it. That's what he have spoken. 
Sirach, chapter 33, verse 7 through 9, he said, Why do if one day excel another? When as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun. In other words, the sun shines every day. He said, by the knowledge of the creator, they were distinguished. And he altered seasons and feasts. Some of them have he made high days and hollowed them. And some of them have he made ordinary days. This is his doings. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Spirit of God, thy guide, thy God. In it, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Spirit of God made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Spirit of God blessed the Sabbath day and hollowed it. This is what he have did. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. He says, And Yahweh blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which Yahweh created and made. Genesis chapter five, verse one through two. He said, this is the book of the generations of Adam in a day that Yahweh created man, male and female. In the likeness of Yahweh made he him, male and female created he them. And blessed them. He gave them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 as we get ready to close. He said this is the book of the commandments of Yahweh and the law that endured forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. But such as leave it shall die. So family, he asking the question, are ye come to inquire of me? He showed us all of our shortcomings. All of the things that we are guilty of doing that will cause us to be on the wrong side of the plumb line. He showed us where these foolish shepherds teaching things that's not good for us and ultimately will lead us to destruction. But he said that he was going to seek after the loss and he was going to heal the sick and the broken hearted and the faint. His own self. And if we will have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand. That word can penetrate our hearts and our minds and. Cause us to repent and start doing the works that's meet for repentance. So, family, I hope and pray something was said 
help you along this journey. Once again, he's asking a question. Are ye come to be inquired of me? So I'm going to say a happy Sabbath to everyone as we begin this Sabbath morning. Follow Christ. Let him be your rearward, your protection. Let him be your guide. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Shalom.